Today, I played the best action RPG game where you begin as a humble poor man and strive to ascend your way up to a king by raising armies, engaging in battles, besieging castles, and much, much more. And I have 100 days to make it as far as I can. This is Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. My journey began with my parents, who were hunters and myself a scout. We were very poor and lived in a village in a neighbouring conflict and got too near one day, so we left to go find a new home. En route, we were ambushed by a gang, killing our parents and kidnapping our siblings. Me and my brother Nogund were able to fight off a few of them and escape. Afterwards, we took refuge at a training camp for a few days. Nogund decided he wanted to stay here and train, but I couldn't. I had to get out into the vast land of Calradia. Before leaving, a mysterious stranger handed me an artifact. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, so I'll have to investigate it later on. My name is Oki, from the family Waki. My journey began on day one. My grand plan is to travel to the land of Velandia to become a skilled Velandian warrior and lead my own troops into battle, and along the way I plan to make dinars by stopping off in cities to do tournaments and sell the prizes I win. So I set my course to the nearby city of Poros. There wasn't a tournament on, but I did manage to make 316 dinars by selling my civilian clothes and mace, as I don't really need them and I'm very poor at the moment. Continuing my journey, I arrived at Zionica, where I stayed overnight preparing for my first tournament on day 2. There were no lords attending this tournament, meaning there won't be a very good prize, but it'll still be worthwhile due to I basically have nothing and the bets I can get and increase in my renown. Round 1 started pitting me against an Imperial Heavy Horseman. Come on, he's low. No, that was a big hit. He's got much better armor than me. Yes. No, 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 no. No. Yes. Yes. Okay, that was too close for comfort. Round two was a 4v4, so I had a higher chance of winning, and on each of these rounds, I was also betting my dinars to hopefully earn more. It came down to a 1v4 that I somehow picked them off one by one, being left with just a horseman. So I picked up a spear, narrowly dodging his charges, eventually mounting a horse myself, barely doing any damage to the heavily armored soldier. No, no, that's my horse. 24 damage, he's gotta be close. Yes! Yes! Round 3 was an easy 1v1, entering me to the last round, feeling a bit too confident, putting away my shield, but still winning without even taking a single hit. I earned 1500 dinars from bets and sold the weapon I won for an additional 659 dinars. The next city on the way to Valandia was Jalmeris, but before I could get there, 16 crooked bandits decided to crash the party. Being armed with only 27 hours, I was going to show them fights I won by quality over quantity. Well, being a complete noob to Panda Lord on PC, my aim was to put it, well, laughably bad. I'd barely made a dent in their numbers by the time I ran out of arrows, okay. so I had to switch to the good old trusty sword. Ouch. It wasn't working, right, so I got this. off my horse for my final stand. Their numbers proved to be no. too much for me, and I found myself no. in the less than ideal role as their prisoner. 24 hours later, I was offered to be released for the price of 284 dinars. I accepted making it to Jalmeris, where I invested in some range arrows and meat so I don't go hungry. Also, from yesterday's skirmish, I actually gained a point in my bow and one-handed weapon stat, so I leveled them up. I then travelled through the night to Ortasia, where there was a tournament going on. Two lords were in attendance, and the prize up for grabs was a spafer sword. Round 1 was easy, as I was on horseback and killed two of their men. Round 2, me and my teammate worked together to absolutely destroy the competition. However, things took a turn on round 3. My teammate was taking down, leaving me to fend for myself, causing me to lose the tournament and my bets. No. I had embarrassed myself, so I moved on to the next city, Sargot. On the fifth day of my journey, finally arriving in Vilandia. Just outside the city, I encountered a large force with an orange exclamation mark, which actually turned out to be the king of Vilandia. I said hi, and then asked him about the Neretzez folly artifact. He informed me the Battle of Pendriac was an emperor leading a massive army into battle and died in this war, which resulted in chaos for both sides. After learning more about the battle, I bid farewell and checked my quest, which now revealed I needed to speak with nine more people to learn about this banner. Arriving at Saga, I was disappointed to find no tournaments on, but I could practice in the arena, which I did to hone my skills. I died quite a lot. 
I did start to improve and then realized my health has been pretty low this whole time and I need to pass time to heal. I was reluctant to spend too much time idly waiting so I only rested until the seventh day before proceeding on to the next city, Jakulan, encountering eight bandits attempting to obstruct my path. This time I was going to get revenge. I fired arrows into them over and over and over, taking them all down, eventually getting off my horse to face the last two enemies with my sword, winning the battle. Take that bitch. I managed to scavenge some valuable loot from their bodies that I planned to sell and even found a stylish hood for myself. I held overnight in the city until I noticed there's an orange exclamation mark coming from the keep, so I tried to enter but had to bribe my way in first, which had the bank. Oh, and they kiss. Hello, good sir. I had a conversation with Infury about the battle and he mentioned he was in command of the crossbowmen, marking off another person from my quest. On day 9 I checked for a tournament and there was one with 5 present noble lords competing for a militia panach, panach, I don't know it, so I was going to have to really try hard. Round 1 kicked off with Urindolf on my team who was an absolute beast. What we want to see? Oh wow, he just destroyed him. The next round, he was on my team once again, and I cannot complain because no one was a match for him. However, as round 3 began, I started to hope he may die, else I will have to face him in the final round, which unfortunately is exactly what happened. I began with a big hit of 63, but keep in mind, if he hits me once, I am most likely dead. Oh, oh, I did it! I did it! Let's go. I am now truly showing my worth as a fighter, collecting my bets and selling off the weapon for some juicy dinars. I journeyed on to the next city of Gallant, but it seemed quite quiet, so I continued on when 11 looters picked a fight with me. They didn't make it. After taking one of them prisoner and looting their corpses for some new armor, I returned back to Galen to ransom the captive and sell the loot. On day 10, some forest bandits wanted a piece of the action. I didn't realize they were armed with bow and arrows, so I was defeated in battle and taken prisoner, enduring two long days of captivity before finally managing to escape to Praven to heal up until day 13, where I participated in a tournament easily passing through rounds 1 and 2, however round 3 was another story. My teammate was killed almost instantly, and I was taken down with one devastating blow. Ah, uh, I don't even want to talk about it, so I rode over to Orcs Hall, failing yet another tournament. Clearly, I wasn't skilled enough yet to be competing as much, so I asked around the city if anyone had a job for me to do. A man named Ledfoot said a few of his men had been captured, so he wanted me to go to the gang's hideout and dispose of them for 300 denials. I'm sure I can do that. He recommended that I bring 10 good men with me, so I hired 10 men and brought some food for them. I then rested for two days to heal and then rode over to the hideout and waited until nightfall to attack. Before launching an assault on the hideout, I tried to figure out how to command my men. How do you do this? I don't even have some of these keys. I struggled a fair amount, but just about managed to tell them to advance. I don't really know how. The Sea Raiders seemed to be a much more formidable force than my recruits were. Even so, we still killed them pressing forward. I tried to take some of the raiders out from a distance, trading blows that depleted the majority of my health, but there were more enemies still standing, so I entered the caves alone because I didn't know how to command my men correctly. This proved to be a fatal mistake as I was overwhelmed by three men, breaking my shield and breaking my spirit. On the plus side, I wasn't taken prisoner, so I ran away with my remaining five men to Pravo. We rested for a few days to heal up and regain our strength. My family name is getting tarnished right now, so to try and do something lower level, I rode over to a local village where a man called Oregon requested me to kill at least two parties of brigands around the local area for 550 dinars. I accepted like a fool. Okay, now I only have sword. Oh, never mind. I escaped on day 20, hiring 7 spearmen from the tavern to hopefully increase my luck. I then healed for 4 days so I was at my maximum strength. This time was going to be different, okay? Look, every gambler quits before they wing big. So, I got a mission from Hummelgar the Hammer, seeking assistance dealing with a local gang. I was happy to help. He informed me that we have to wait 4 days before taking action, so in the meantime I set out to a neighbouring city, only to be intercepted by a group of sea raiders attempting to rob us. I decided to bite my ego and flee the battle, causing me to lose all my troops, but at least I still had my life to arrive at Rovolt. Okay, my mission was personal this time. I was going to redeem myself in a tournament for the prize being a nasal helmet. Slight problem, a minor hiccup. I had left my armour on my civilian outfit when I wanted the streets of the city, but as a wise man once said, why do I need armour if I'm not planning on getting hit? Round 1 was a piece of cake as I was on horseback finishing the round by killing a Valandian knight. 
Round two, me and my teammate defeated the first duo, but he fell when we were third partied. So it was down to me. I fought as hard as I could, but still fell. No, 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 no. I got this. No. No! Luckily, I still had enough points to pass on to the next round, obliterating both my opponents. <laughs> round 4. Completed it, mate. I made around 2,000 dinars from that tournament, and I finally gained a little bit of self-respect. Heading back to Orcs Hall, some Lewis caught me off guard, but I ain't no bitch anymore. Those low lowlifes gave me some nice new hand wraps and a prisoner that I sold the following day, also leveling up my stats. Once I was done with that, I went to Pravend to deal with the gang. Yep, I forgot my clothes again. So for context, I actually started this mission wrong. I wasn't supposed to fight the gang alone, so I may have been defeated. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> no. I was actually supposed to go with Hummelgart, which I did after taking some time to rest for two days. In that time, I found myself hanging out in the tavern, where I met a man named Gunteric of the Hills. He seemed like an honourable man and a promising warrior, so I asked him to join my party. He accepted after a payment of a few dinars. I am changing his name to G-Dog, it just rolls off the tongue better. Saying Gunteric, Gunteric, it's G-Dog now. I then met with Hummelgart in the dead of the night to confront the gang. Their leader Red Eye tried bribing me into leaving, but I am a man of honour and denied, causing a fight to break out. I loot round the back of the enemy, slicing them down, causing an easy victory. Haha. <laughs> still up on my high horse, trying to do good, I attempted taking down brigands again. For some reason, thinking I still had my spearmen and that G-Dog was currently with me, I was wrong on both fronts and had low health as well, so I did not complete it, mate. After escaping, I called upon G-Dog to join my party, and then I rested. <laughs> On the 31st day, I enlisted some more recruits to go try fight a small group of brigands, accidentally attacking two together. I killed one with my first shot, and then circled the battle, firing arrows whilst my recruits fought valiantly. Yeah, <laughs> From the loot, I got some decent tailor guarded arm wraps, and since that was two groups combined, I thought it completed my quest, gaining me 550 dinars plus 371 for selling the loot. The following day, I participated in a tournament, winning the first round with this awesome horse kill, making it to the final round, where I got a bit too cocky, putting away my shield and going in first person. Yeah. Uh uh. Ah. It's scarier. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good hit. No! I should not be getting this cookie when I'm on day 32. Um, I'm still broke. <sighs> With G-Dog's arrival to the party, we were now able to head up north, making a pit stop at the village of Hongard, where I was able to recruit some better troops due to my increased reputation around the area. So I splashed out on six squires. To test them, we chased down a group of 13 looters until day 35. When I gave up because they were too fast. Instead I rode to the nearest city running into this shady woman who was selling some silver for cheap apparently. I paid 525 dinars for the load when a merchant approached me telling me they were his stolen goods. I'm sorry but you snooze you lose buckaroo. They were mine now. This decision did increase my criminal stat a little bit but anything for the hustle. Dude. Once the sun arose, I competed in a tournament, of course dominating round 1, still betting on all of them, although I was getting a bit worried due to my pass running pretty low. Thankfully, I carried the boats, easily winning the helmet that I kept as it had 28 armour and gave my old helmet to G-Dog. I wanted to sell my silver now, which I had to do in another city, so he did just that, dodging some scum on the way. I sold the silver for 779 dinar, so that was a nice little profit. And then her cheers coming from the arena. Yep, yep. Yeah, another tournament was on. I bested it, of course, keeping the knight's lance I won. Now, since I'm a loyal Valandian, I want to go rustle up some Petanian feathers as they are their neighbours. So I rode up there buying eight recruits on the way. Arriving in Pencanok, I thought what better way to embarrass them than by winning a tournament in their homeland. So I entered myself with the prize being a Petanian fur cloak. Just look at his performance. They did not want the smoke. I kept this up for the whole tournament, winning the cloak, and wearing it out of spite. I continued exploring the Batanian lands, finding 12 looters. I used this as a chance to practice commanding my men, 
which I kind of figured out a little, and I, I mean a little. I got my recruits into a shield wall and whistled my squires to follow me and charge the enemy, then calling in my recruits. Alright, charge. Uh, charge. Die. There we go. My men fought very well, winning with no deaths. Hooray. Due to this, I was able to upgrade five recruits to footmen and fought the levy crossbowmen. For the loot I scavenged, well, I gave that to G Dog. The next day, on my way back into Valandia, I fought another group of looters, losing two men this time because I messed up my commands, causing my squires to run away. It is what it is. On the bright side, the rest of my footmen got upgraded to spearmen. On the 40th day, I conducted the business of selling the prisoners and the loot I had acquired, then competing in a tournament in Ostacan on the 41st day for strapped male chassis. Chassis, chassis. There's not much to say about this one. It was easy. Looking at my quests, I was now clan tier 1 as my renown had climbed above 50. To get that to clan tier 2, I need 5 more cheeky chaps on my crew, so I swung by a local village completing my quest. As I was about to handle some bandits nearby, you know, being a good Valandian and all, a Valandian party of 53 came to help. I must say this was quite an unfair battle, but it was sick fighting with such a large force knowing I'm becoming more respected. And to crease said reputation, as soon as the battle was finished, I went straight for that hideout that bested me once before, bringing my best 10 fighters with me. We breezed through, taking out enemies with ease. It was looking good, although I had taken quite a few harpoons to the body, so my health was low. Even so, we killed the last enemies, or so I thought. I forgot about the final boss, that I foolishly accepted his duel. Come on. No! no! Luckily, I kept all my men returning to Orcs Hall. It was here where a man named Ragados approached me claiming he knew the whereabouts of my little brother and sister and explained to me he was betrayed by the man who has them captive, so he will help me find them in exchange to get revenge. I accepted, although I kept my wits about me as Ragados was part of the gang that attacked me and my family. Day 44 was spent doing some preparations like upgrading my spearmen to swordsmen and the very next day I rode to the hideout marked on my map. It was the one I was just defeated at. I won't let that happen again. I think my blood covered face gives us a hint to who was winning this fight. It came down to the showdown with Galter at the end. I didn't show him the respect of doing a duel. I watched my men beat him down then finishing off his henchmen. From that fight, I upgraded my troops, even having a swordsman turn into a Valandian sergeant. Also changing up my inventory, ditching the bow and arrow, replacing it with harpoons and a sword. Now, it was time to get down to business. Ragados executed Galta, and after that I spoke to Nogan, my brother. He assured me that our siblings were safe and he would take them to the nearest city, as they don't want to see this. I executed Ragados for what he did to my family was unforgivable. On day 48, I took some time to focus on my sibling's development. For my 14 year old sister Alga, I gave her a treatise on siegecraft. The hope is that she grows older and she can assist me in designing and crafting more advanced and effective siege equipment. As for my 11 year old brother Varric, I dedicated his efforts to increasing his physical strength to prepare him to become a formidable warrior ready to stand by my side when the time comes for us to fight together. Taking some time to heal until day 50 was essential as today I raided a local forest hideout since I now had a pretty decent group of men, doing this was no hard task. We sliced through them all, one by one, and then fighting the final boss with his henchmen at the end. I may have taken a tumble at the very end, but my men still won the fight, giving me another sergeant, and a set of new fresh wrist straps. The day after, I bought six more squires and noticed that Nogun can now join my party. I just have to go meet him in this tavern to bring him along. He actually had a lot of unspent levels, so I leveled him up, then riding over to Jakulan, arriving on day 54, competing at a tournament with four lords in attendance. I lost the first round because it came down to me with a crossbow, which I suck at, versus a horse. Somehow though, Nogun won the whole tournament, so I got the prize anyway. And if you think I'm giving it to him, you're wrong. Wind's Fury is my new sword. In this city, a man named Tundrick the... In this city... In this city, a man named Tudrick the Tanner wanted us to take care of some poachers at Etterford, so we accepted. Arriving in the town, I got my footmen in a shield wall with my crossbowmen placed behind them, charging in with my squires. For some reason, I thought it was a good idea to get off my horse and take them all on alone. I got my shit rocked.
Thankfully, my troops were much smarter than myself and easily won the fight. Due to my mistakes, I healed in Sargot for a few days when I decided it was time to officially join the Valandian Empire. I brought my way into the keep to speak to Amorkan where I asked to join service of the king as a mercenary. He said yes and I'll be paid 172 dinars per group of enemies I kill. I accepted as this was a good way into building my reputation and gaining influence. I also played a board game with him. Completed it, mate. On day 58, I took a look at the map. Currently, we are at war with the Sturgeons, so I'm going to head up that way to help out any way I can. On the way, I spoke to Morma Aegon and Morma Modir. I don't know how you say it. About the Battle of Pendriac, ticking two more nobles off my list. On the 61st day, I did my job as a mercenary, taking on 21 looters that were not even a problem to me anymore. I only lost four squires and even gained some influence and dinars. Who are you? Yes, last one. Die. Oh, he's strong. Die. Let's go. Woo. Close by was a Sturgeon village called Glintor that was unprotected, so I attacked it for their resources, placing my troops in this chokehold, waiting for the enemies to come in and crushing them with zero casualties. Out of one. Out of two. Out of three. Out of four. No. Five. A charge! Die! You ain't got nothing on me! Ow! 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 Bosh! Stop running! Stop running! Haha! <laughs> Woo! I now even had some hardened crossbowmen from that fight and got a nice new horse. To be even more of a menace, I started raiding said village until I saw God itself warning me away. <laughs> On route, I donated my prisoners to this castle, and somehow, I don't really know how, but I accidentally accepted a marriage request from Icratia to no good, so he's no longer a bachelor. Bro, what? How did I... I didn't even know they knew each other, how did they get married? Again, I don't know how, but she is now part of the family, so we're gonna head to Rote. Ro Rote. So we're going to have to rotate to collect her for my broski. Stopping off on the way at Sinan for a tournament with seven lords, which is insane, and the prize is even better being a southern decorated chainmail piece. Let's just say the competition did not stand a chance. Obviously, I didn't sell the armor as it's miles better than my current set. And then leaving the city, I spotted in the distance a Sturgeon caravan that we chased down until eventually we caught up with them the next morning. I set up my usual tactic, charging in with my cavalry, trying to pick off some of their horse archers. And it looks like most of their troops are actually higher tiers than mine, so this could go pretty bad as we are outnumbered. I managed to get a good shot in with my harpoon, then return it to my troops, moving them forward as the Sturgeons were defending their caravans, so we had to be the advancing side. After neutralizing most of their cavalry units, I commanded my infantry to move towards the enemy ranks. Engaging the archers became my main priority, but this didn't come without consequence. I took quite a few hits myself, even so, I carried on fighting. My swordsman finally made contact, slashing down the Sturgeons one by one until a stray arrow shot me straight in the head, causing my troops leader to be out of the battle. They are trained well and stuck to their command, slaying the caravan and winning the battle with 15 deaths on our side. Not too bad all things considering. From the loot I got new horse armour and gave my companions some upgraded armour. When I realised I had strayed quite far from my destination so I got right back to riding, stopping off to sell the spoils of war for 5,000 dinars, buying some workhorses to help carry the load. The day after I competed in another tournament for decorated imperial gauntlets. It was tough but I won and they look sick. I also just found out here it tells you how much you could buy and sell stuff in other towns so you can make a profit. I'm, I'm stupid. Day 69. What better day to do the first official medieval joke interlude written definitely by me, not ChatGPT. So, why did the knight bring a ladder to the battle? To take things to the next level. <sighs> no, no. Alright, right, well, we've got one more. What did the dragon say after the knight defeated him? You really know how to drag on a fight. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Anyway, day 69, finally making it. What better day to add Icrate to my party and strip off her loot. Whoa, 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 hear me out. Her armor is worth a staggering 62,000 dinars and her horse armor, 23,000. 
I also sold her horse for 15,000 because I wasn't skilled enough to ride it yet and the Denars are much more useful to me. Day 17 was a sad day because with my new fan strike ready to take on the Sturgy and Scum, the King of Valandia decided to make peace, so no more battles. It's fine, I didn't want any anyway. At least this gives me time to train up a small army for our next war. Winning a tournament the following day for a half scale boarding which I equipped it on my horse, selling this one since it's worth quite a bit. I won yet another tournament the next day, leveling up my two handed stat, also hiring five squires and a tier 3 Valandian gallant. Over the next few days, I went from town to town, hiring tier 2 troops or above, also winning a tile horse that I kept as my new steed. GG. GG. Let's go! Too easy, dude! Give me that crown! Boom! By day 75, there were 36 troops of my party hungry for a fight. I tested them out by attacking a nearby forest hideout that had been causing the locals some issues. Those little vermin won't be causing issues anymore. On day 77, a villager asked me kindly if I could deliver 10 cattle for him to another town. I accepted, but was called away before completing my task as we declared war on the Western Empire. Oh, I'm excited for this. On the map, I saw an army forging at Sargot, so me and my party rode there, joining Lord Erdogan's army that are travelling to besiege the Ab Corner Castle. Upon our arrival, siege preparations were constructed and continued until day 81, when the assault commenced. I was given command of a group of archers, which I must say is not my speciality. I ordered them behind these barricades in the scatter formation, so hopefully the enemy catapults won't cause too much damage. I then decided to lead an assault on the wall, alone, I, yeah. Riding up close to the wall, I was throwing up my harpoons, killing one of the archers, and then some of the troops seemed to see what I was doing and started marching towards me. I then hauled up the ladders which the troops helped with, and I made the smart decision not to go up first. Oh, is there money up here? Yeah, we got this, we got this. Push boys. <laughs> the advance on the wall was much easier than I thought. The hardest thing was my PC trying not to die, so I had to lower my game settings because for some reason my PC is dying at the moment, I'm not sure. Anyway, after pushing through the top wall and taking out the enemies, I charged at the last group defending the castle, not thinking they would all come after me. There's a squad. No! Even though I fell, we still won, claiming the castle into the Valandian Empire. My party suffered no casualties, also receiving 4% of the loot, which is, well to put it, crap. Now while this army decided their next move, I joined the passing army being led by Lucan that was marching to defend an allied castle. Although I had low health, I couldn't not join the attack of the enemy, in which I was in charge of the horse archers. This was a big battle, there will be many casualties. I stayed with my group up on the hill observing the battlefield and waiting for one side to make a move. The enemy's cavalry charged at us first as a distraction to their main units charging against our infantry. I had to play it really safe with my health, carefully picking off the horsemen one by one. Oh, oh. I thought we were clearly in the lead of this fight when they had a whole other battalion of archers that landed a shot on me almost taking my life. It mattered not as our footmen creeped towards them whilst us cavalry did our best to thin their numbers. Unfortunately, I was bested, but I didn't have any worries that we were going to lose the battle. Although I might lose my eardrums listening to this, it's torture. <laughs> Once the battle was won, I spoke to Valeric and Ingolfa about the Battle of Pedriac and then travelled to Sargot to sell my loot, resting through to the following day, doing a quick tournament for the Dawnbreaker actually killing my brother Nogan to win. I would have gotten it either way. I then spoke to Tunneric the Tanner as it's finally time for me to have another revenue stream, so I asked him to set up a caravan with upgraded troops, costing me 22,500 dinars, but caravans go from city to city selling goods and making money, but it needs someone to lead it, so I appointed G-Dog to this position, I wish him good luck in this journey, I hope I trade him well enough. No good to be in the stud got Icratia pregnant, that's it really. I continued resting until day 90, in which this day I joined back to Lucad's army where we were attacking another castle five days later. 
I chose not to be in charge of any troops this time, and instead be my own squad. Because who's going to carry the boats? They don't know me, son! Get it! 18! They don't know me, son! Okay, man. This is what it all comes down to. Breaching this castle. Oh, no. Push the battering ram, man. Don't give up. Not much further. Die. Uh, ow. Defend yourselves. Push. Push. Good shot, bad. Pull. Heave. Heave. Yes. Next entryway. I could hear allied troops had already gotten over the halls and were fighting the enemies inside, so by the time we got in it was a matter of clearing up the pests, easily taking out squads of enemies alone. Show them no mercy! Right, we've taken the castle. Where's the rest of them? Come, I'll take you all on. Every single one of you. Die! Yes. They're retreating. Don't let them retreat. No retreating. Let's go. Woo. Only lost three of my men. Absolutely destroyed them. And with that, the Valandian Empire had gained another castle. From the spoils of war, I gained 14 troops and got some decent loot for my amazing contribution to the siege. I thought I had now proven my worth to Valandia and wanted to officially join them by becoming a vassal. So I spoke to Lucand about the matter, who said I need to have Cloud Tier 2. Fuck, I guess I'm not worthy enough yet. I also donated my Batanian soldiers I received because I don't want that scum on my team. Staying on the warpath, our army marched to Varon Castle to besiege it when a much larger force intercepted us. We didn't have much of a chance, but we were not going to back down from a fight. Our troops started off by retreating to a better vantage point, and I was able to take out one of their nobles straight away. That's what I thought. Oh no. That's, that's a lot of cavalry. Well lads, this is my final moment. Then I had a good time. Oh no. I'll try to lose some of them. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Let's try and get a few, a few hubboos of them. This is gonna be a slaughter. That elite cavalry unit absolutely swarmed our forces like ants attacking a swoo bug in the jungle. Come on. No. Yes. Oh no, 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 no. No! Ah! My horse is gonna die! Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's not a sight you wanna see! No! I stuck away to try take out some of the crossbowmen, taking some hits myself. They're faster than me! Oh, this is such a slaughter! I need that horse! Come on, come on, give me your horse. Come on, yes. My horse was a lot slower and weaker than the enemies, so I lured one away, killing him and stealing his steed. So at least now I was on a level playing field, but not really. It didn't help much. It seemed now I was the only ally left on horseback able to take out their elite Imperial cavalry. The enemies did retreat back at some point, making us believe we had a break until the cavalry charged once more, causing a massacre. Oh, they're retreating. They'll give us a chance. The regroup. We're holding out. Good job, man. No, they're coming for our archers. No. Protect the archers. Why have they got Vladdy at night? Yes. We're portray our side. Ah, oh, that was a big hit. It was time. Luke had ordered our final charge, our final pushback.
No! Unfortunately, I was overwhelmed and had to have hope in our men to win. The battle kept going on due to each side calling in more and more reinforcements until the Empire proved they had the higher numbers and our whole army was slaughtered like cattle. I was held prisoner in Ferron Castle. The Valandian noble Valeric had learned about our defeat and marched over straight away with his army, but to me, it looked like they were going to lose once again. The Western Empire was disgracing Valandia, so when I got the offer to escape the castle for 7,000 dinars, I accepted. Fleeing to an allied castle to speak to a noble, there wasn't one currently here, so I moved on to the next, getting jumped by 17 crooks. I only had less than a quarter of my health, and as you can imagine, with their raining arrows on me, I was only able to kill a few before being disgraced. Alright, my only option is the spear. Directly at them. I was losing my fighting spirit. How could I call myself a Valandian after these recent events? I escaped captivity on day 101, riding to the keep in Sargot to speak to Morkon to end my contract with Valandia.